or slanted. Before we start reading the next paragraph, can you read the one um word for me? Hi, it's uh he he doi he kui Close. he kui hi. He could follow. Yep. Hi. So here is Tisana Mado wa Doremo Garasu ga Nakata ga Igoro no Igoko Ti wa Waruku Nasa Soda. Um, it say here that the the small window, dare mo, dore mo, do dore mo, whichever one, basically, uh, all of the glass. With with regard to the small window, all of the glass, not exist, not there. Hi. In other words. There are no glass on the in windows. Any of the windows. In right. Any of the windows. Um, however, the igoko chiwa, with regard to the place of comfort, wara kunasaso da. It doesn't seem bad. Perfect. And do you know why it's uh, Wadukasa, <laughs> the Nasaso, rather than just Naso? Um, so you mentioned in Hi. the, you mentioned that it was because it's Naka plus So. Hi. So um, the Ku is Nai plus So. Nai plus Do not sol. exist. So let me just add the Sa there. So with all E adjectives except for Nai, and um, yoi. All of them do the standard dropping e, but nai and yoi are exceptions to that rule. So instead, we do the sa here. Nai and yo, hi. Sa so, da sa so to. Yeah. Sorry about seem... that from last week. Hi. Here. Ya ne ura ni agatte. Atario Mi Mawashita Oreto Nimotsu Igai wa Nani Monakte Garanto Shite Iru I went up the attic and I look around the surrounding. Hi. I except except for my except for I and the luggage, there are nothing else. Nani mo not that not that. And it is quiet. Is Garan it quiet? Garanto? It's empty. Hi, it's empty. Yuka niwa Tairyo no Hokori ga Ku Kasamoru. The kasa does have that same kasa naru, does mean to um stack up on top of each other, but this is tomoru. Kasa naru is, I think, over here. Kasa naru, but that omoi kanji. Very heavy umbrella. Kasa naru. Hi, so here to tsumori. Um, kabe no. Shikui wa hibiware heya zen tai ga okori pokt 
って、ほこりぼって、かびくさい。The floor,、uh, with regard to the floor, the dust, the thick dust, Uh, sumori, uh, pow on top of one another. Um, that's a good guess. It just says they're on the floor, right? Ni, yuka ni. So, on the floor, um, the, that's what we're talking about. On the floor, there is a large amount of dust piled up. Piled up, sumori. Um, The plaster of the wall, sikui, uh, is hibire ware. It's it's cracked. Hibiware. The entire room is hikori bokte. Hokori bokte. Hi. So that's poi, right? Kute. Is how e adjectives turn into te form. Bokte. Kori boy. Kori boy. The entire room is kori boy. In other words, it's um, it's full of dust. Hi. It's full of dust, and hari kusai. It smell bad, uh, but kabi is mold, so it's moldy smell. Perfect. Mufo, mofu, o. Pasanete, bedo, kawari nishi, muffin no, nokori o, kachiri. Nagara Mogri Konda. I stack up the blanket in place of a bed. I Kachiri Nagara while I was munching on the leftover muffin. Mugori Konda. Moguri konda. Something into. You're right. Something into. Moguri means to crawl. I crawl into. I crawl into it. What do you crawl into? Mofu. Hi, 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 hi. Crawl into or maybe crawl onto? I'm not sure. It would probably be into because of komu, right? Hi. So he's crawling underneath all the blankets he piled up because it's cold. I'm like, hi. Fu sukareta. I'm tired. Demo. Nagatte. Tanoshi. Ichinichi da. Da. However, it was a long and Fun day. Perfect. Muffin no o. Saigo no hitokake made. Tabete kara. Nemuri ni suita. The last of the muffin I ate. Then I fall asleep. Hi. And what does made mean here? What like what is it doing here? It it, it finished up. Yeah. It reaches the conclusion. It's kind of like mo as a way to do even. It's a way to show that I fully ate even up even the smallest bits, even the tiniest crumbs, even the very last crumb I Once I ate the very last crumb, basically. So in English, it's kind of like adding the word very to the sentence because we already have last here with saigo. Hitokake, the very last leftover, very last crumb. 
Perfect. So now we're going to be reading um, Nebody's Diary Entry. Uh, Nikki, Nikki, Hi. Nikki, Nishiki. This would be neat. Nikki, Nikki, Nikki. Nikki. So that's kind of like that Nichi, right? That's the real for Nichi, which ends with a cha cha chi, which when you added the key here, that right there turns into a small t. You'll see that a lot. Same with um, like a hatu with the two from like hatu on. It'll become a ha haken. So um, what happens with tu right there, hatu, is the same thing that will happen with chi. So both chi and tu will turn into small tu in these kind of word formations. So niki from nichi and ki. Niki, day written down. Um, do you know how to read this word? Um, ude. Good guess. It's not arm. It does look like arm, though. Ude. You see, both of them are extremely similar. Mm. Um, beer. This means clothes. Clothes. Fuku. Hai, fuku. It's a fuku. So fuku has that same moon kanji as ude, but it kind of has something that kind of looks like a clothes hanger and a little like outfit right there hanging. So put your clothes away in your closet. Fuku. Um, can you read this word for me? Kosodoro. Perfect. Doro. Kosodoro. Kosodoro is a way to say a sneaky thief. So not just a normal thief, but a sneaky one. Can you read this example sentence for me? Kono doro no kozo wa fuku wo kitte iru. The boy that is that thief, this thief, this sneaky thief, uh, he wearing the clothes yeah he's wearing clothes the 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 sticky thief boy is wearing clothes hi do you know what kitanai means it is a e adjective can't breathe good idea but kitanai means dirty opposite of kirei kitanai dirty um, theoretically, we saw this earlier with the verb, which was yogoreru. Yeah, same kanji, yogo. That was like back in chapter one, yogoreru. But kitanai is the e adjective uh, version of this guy. Dirty, kitanai. Um, how do you say dirty in Japanese? Kita. Perfect. Kitanai no kita. Can you read this example sentence for me? Kitana, kitana, kitana. Um, kit, kita. No, what? I'm sorry, I messed it again. Uh, it end with the e, Mani. So it's it's kitanai. Hi. Kitanai. Uh, kozo. Kitanai kozo wa koso doro da. Uh, that dirty little boy was was a sneaky thief. Yep, the dirty little boy is a sneaky thief. Is um, a sneaky. So furoji means a street urchin, which is like a child that is a hobo, something that uh doesn't have a home, homeless, homeless child. Furoji. Money. The the kanji. The first two kanji was furo. Meaning urgent, like the sea urgent. Um, no, uh, that is an English word. Well, furo, furo is what is it, money? Uh, a street urchin is a English word to refer to a child that is homeless that lives on the street. Oh, uh, you, it's something that would probably show up in older books, I think. Um, but furo in Japanese means um 
a vagabond or someone that wanders around. And G means child. Child. Okay. Normally like a problem child, like mondaiji. Suro. Um, Uro. Like a wandering, wanderer. Yeah. A child G that wanders around without a home kind of idea. Furoji. Isn't the first kanji to float money? It is, is it to float. Yep. So the first is to float, as in like floating around. Hi. The second is, is that the kanji for pouring water? It does look kind of like that, but it's more commonly apparently a counter for a person that, uh, like, like for example, a roni, you know, a samurai that um has no master. Roni. Did I spell the wrong? What is, ro is that Ronin? That ro ro Should have known that uh -huh. as long. That's that. That's that guy without a master, a masterless samurai. I see. So Ronin also means someone who's wandering. Like right. he's masterless, so he he's he's going from place to place. Right. So it also had that meaning of being. So it kind of means you have thing. nowhere to go. Is kind of this a moving kind of meaning. Person. So you're floating. You have nowhere to go, and you are a child. Furoji. Furoji. So in English, the old word for that is street urchin. I don't know if there's like a better word for that. Um, but that's the heard. word I knew. <laughs> I knew <laughs> that means it. I was like, is that a, a thing in the ocean? <laughs> no, I think, yeah, I it could be related to that. Uh, but yeah, that, that. That's an English word, not a not the Japanese meaning. Hi, child without home, lives on street. <laughs> I'm sorry I asked so much about each of the kanji because... Well, it makes you remember like, the word better. Yes, it helped me remember. Otherwise, they all start to blur. All these kanji start to look alike to me they at some do. point. That, um, that's how learning works. Uroji. It's all about making those connections. So let's go read an hey. example sentence. Sono koso uh, doro no furoji wa uh ikinai good guess ki kinai kita oh uh, kitanai kitanai fuko fuku o kite iru um so so no that kosodoro no furoji wa uh the wandering boy that was that there that that was that that sneaky thief right that sneaky uh, thief wandering boy without that a home sne that sneaky thief wandering boy he is wearing a dirty clothes he's wearing dirty Perfect. clothes okay let's go oh boro boro is a sound effect that means like in shabby shabby um condition Uh, quick question, Imani. Do you yeah. find your reading of Japanese that you came across a lot of the uh, these relative clauses a lot? Yeah. Quite a bit. I would say relative clauses are very common in Japanese. It, it, it seems to me, because when I translate relative clauses into the English, it sounds very cumbersome. It sounds very heavy. Yeah. It, like you, It's like a tongue twister or something. Uh, um. That's interesting. Okay, got yeah. it. I think in English, normally it'd be better to split it into two sentences when you um translate. We have a very um, specific rule in English about run-on sentences being bad, um, especially for our um, novels and things like that. We prefer having a range of different sizes with uh, specific rules. Hi. Seems like it's a thing in Japanese, though. Because yeah. they keep going on and on about the noun. Like they, they start describing these nouns. They go... Two sentences long about the noun, then they hit the action afterward. So, so, so it's definitely a lot more commonly used in Japanese. Hi. Uh, um. So here it, it's uh kozo wa kitanai boro 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 is about time. That's a good guess. You're thinking about soro soro so so sound. Hi. Boro boro is a sound effect. Do you have any idea what it might be describing? I remember now. 
It's been worn out. So, so. It's used up. Boro boro fuku. Oh, hite iru kara. So here, kara come after iru. Right. I'm guessing this kara mean therefore. Yes. Uh, koso doro no furoji ni shika mienai. So here we have shika. Nothing but mienai is the negative form of mieru. So shika in the negative meaning nothing but. Hi. So only, only. Mm, that the sneaky thief wondering boy ni 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 so yeah. this ni turn it into an adverb I the way in which you need it I see nothing but that sneaky thief wondering boy hi so when you say furoji that wandering boy it means the boy's homeless I see nothing but that homeless wandering thief. Right. After, uh, okay, so he's the boy, the boy that was wearing a that dirty clothing. Or well, not dirty, uh dirty well, and worn out. Dirty. Right. Uh the boy was wearing the boy is the boy is wearing dirty worn out clothes. Therefore, I see nothing but, I see nothing but a wonder, a homeless, uh, sneaky thief. Hi, perfect. So, so this sentence basically say, based on what I'm seeing. Yes. Based upon his appearance, the only conclusion that I can come up with is that he's a dirty, homeless thief. Yes, dirty homeless boy thief. Hi. So, sneaky thief and homeless and a boy. That's all you can see. Something that you maybe who, should not who be is in saying your... this? Is uh is... nobody? He's writing this in his diary. Hi. He's like, oh, never... I look at the boy, and all I can see is a with his dirty clothes. It's a sneaky little thief and a little Hi. homeless kid because he is a homeless little sneaky thief uh, <laughs> that he found on the street. <laughs> um, so he looks like what he is currently. <laughs> Hi. Um, do you know what kakko means? Kakko. Kakko. <laughs> kakko. Okay, so ko is it's a it's a girl. That's a good guess. Nothing no, to do with ko, the meaning here. That's suki, ko, that kanji. Suki. To like. Yeah. So ko him mean, mean the thing that you like? Um I guess. Ka um ka so Ko from suki and kak, which would be kaku, means um, um, I guess the style is the meaning it's using here. So a style you like is the outfit you are wearing. Your whole ensemble is your kako. Um, that's just what it means. It just means like the way you look, basically. So no kako would be that. The way in which you present yourself. So that's their clothes, their hair, things like that. You look at them and you're like, oh, that's what they're wearing today. Kakko. Kakko. Money, that kaku. Hi. What is that kanji by itself or when it goes with It another... basically means style. It has um lots of meanings, but the meaning they're using here is the style meaning of kaku. Um, it's normally not really on its own, but it can also be used to mean like the status of something or a rule or regulation but it it's normally just means the way like the way in which you you like the or like say kaku it's a good word yeah that's your behavior right that's the way in which you live say kaku versus kakko is the way in which you like it's in the, what you're wearing what you like to wear hi okay kaku Sonna kakko de. Um, 
kitanai, kitanai koso, doro, shika mianai. I see nothing but a sneaky, dirty thief with that style. Perfect. With that such outfit, a, with that style. Perfect. Such a, you know what komaru means? The cotton. No, that's not it. To be locked up. Good to be guess. In... Uh, komaru means to be troubled. To be troubled. Yeah, so the kanji doesn't help super much. Tree in a box. I don't think it's in that much trouble. I guess the tree will outgrow the box. box. Komaru. To be... be troubled. Komaru. To be troubled. Hi. To be troubled. Be... Do you know what the te form is for komaru? Te form? Komatte. Perfect. Komatte with a glottal stop. It is a u verb. Um, can you read this word for me? Konna kakko de komaru. I'm troubled by that outfit. Perfect. With such an outfit, I am troubled. Do you know how to read this kanji? The truth. I, I mean, reality. It does mean the truth or reality. How do you pronounce it? Jitsu. Hi. So we're going to be seeing jitsu in a word that follows that standard rule we talked about earlier today. How do you think you read this word that means, this word that means in fact? So we're going to have a glottal stop here. So it's Hi. Decide, hi. Um, so theoretically, you say decide, but normally the S kind of continues for the. It becomes a longer S doing decide. It's hard to fully close that glottal stop for S. Decide rather than decide. 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 So it starts with dis. What did it end with? Tai. Perfect. This side, this side character mean um on the occasion like of. Is that from the word like a festival? Yes. It's like festival, like something. I forgot about it. Something. It just means like on the uh, occasion occasion of something. Um, It's definitely shows up in the word for festival, but not matsuri, I don't think. So I'm not sure which. Um, I think it is matsuri. Is it matsuri? Money, but, oh. It's not. <laughs> um, The little kanji is though, and is in matsuri. Uh, matsuri. So it doesn't have the boo boo um the b it doesn't have that in it. Oh, I see. But it it is used in things like that because it means occasion and uh and a uh, matsuri is an example of a special occasion. So the real occasion is in fact on the occasion situation. of of an actual thing. So it's in fact is mean right. in fact in, in fact. true. In truth, perfect. Yeah. Um, so, so in the Japanese, there are two words for to state. Uh, one word is jitsai is to mean the factness of thing, like right. And then the other one for the true, true, it's it's another concept in Japanese, isn't it? Money I'm like like uh, shinjitsu. What are we talking about? The truth. The truth. Yeah. The shin kanji is that true, like deep meaning behind behind something. Well, the jitsu is more of how reality. So jitsu is the outside and shin is the inside. So shin jitsu combines both the inside and the outside to mean the most truth. I see. I see. So okay, got it. Yeah, because because you you know how like in English the word true can mean many things. Cool, it cool. can the uh, reality as it appear, like in actual reality, or it can mm -hmm. also mean the truth that govern. Hi hi like, hi. The truth that you know the ultimate truth. Totally. Uh, anyhow, okay. So jitsai, jitsai. Jitsai sono kakko de komaru. In fact, 
that outfit troubles me. All right. And let's go or read. I'm troubled by that outfit. Holy. That thing, like, by that outfit. Mm -hmm. right. Uchi no meshi sky wa jitsai. Uh, Kitsai. Actually, kitanai koso doro na no that. So here, na no that, na no that. Right. Komaru. Komaru. So that na is there because we're ending with no de. And this no doesn't like to touch um, nouns because it's not noun describing noun, though. So it makes it very obvious that. This is connected to no de rather than being attached to the doro. So if it said doro no de, that would feel like, hmm, is, is the no attached to doro, attached to de? So that just makes it very nice and clear. So that's why we have the na stuck in here. So it's just a filler blank. So here, this koso doro is describing no de. Sure. Okay, so here it's a because, because it is a dirty, sneaky thief. In, because, in fact, it is a dirty, sneaky thief, I am trouble. Hi. Right? Who is the sneaky, oh. dirty thief? So, uchi no meshi sky wa. So, the servant of the house or the servant Hi. of. My servant, right? This Uchi referred My servant to is a better English translation of that word, yes. But literally, Uchi... the servant of the house is what the Uchi is theoretically saying as like a literal translation, like the children of my house, the dogs of my house, things like that. That's how that Uchi is used to mean I, I meaning our household. But we don't How... say that in English. So my servant is a better English translation. But... Right. Of the house is not incorrect in that it's a direct translation. Hi. Okay. Uh, but my this... servant, in fact, is a dirty, um, sneaky thief. So I'm troubled. Well, I see. Hi. Look at that. Okay, let's go read the line from the book. He's saying ma, 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 as in like anyway, anyhow. Right. Um. Jitsai, so na, no. Da ga. So na no da ga. Right. That's like the soul from so desu ne, not the soul from um waruka nasa soul. Two basically different souls. The jisai is not attached to that soul there. They are next to each other, but they're not touching. There's an imaginary space. Right. So basically, he say here that uh, it is that case, however, sona, sona no da. It is the it is what it is. In however, the case that that is the fact that it is. It is what it is. He it he is, is uh, a dirty street urchin that I picked off from the middle of the street, little right. boy who's homeless and dirty. <laughs> that is correct. Jitsai, sona no da ga, uchi no meshi, uchi no meshi ga. So my servant. Sonna kakko de wa komaru. I'm worried. I'm worried that such an outfit. Sonna kakko de. I'm troubled with such an outfit. Which is basically saying the outfit, like the whole assemble of what his servant is wearing, is that so even though in reality this is a homeless boy I picked up from the street that is dirty and is a thief. I mean, he stole my magical stone. But since he's now my servant, I'm a little bit troubled with what he's currently wearing. Everybody's going to be like, what, why does why your servant look like a dirty street urchin? Well, he is one, but I don't know if I want my reputation to say that. Right? right. So with such an outfit as that, I am troubled. I'm troubled Funny, with my I, servant. I, I think that somewhere along the line, there's some miscommunication here. Because <laughs> there is a miscommunication. <laughs> He never explicitly said to Khan that he is his servant. So oh, Khan, Khan is like, ah, oh, I'm the Deshi. Woo woo woo. And, I'm Khan, the Deshi. and he he never he never accepted Khan as an apprentice, but Khan went ahead and think 
that this relationship is that of a, a master apprentice. On the other hand, Khan never accepts to be his servant, but in Nevity's mind, yeah. <laughs> he is his servant. So, yeah, the they greatest each, of misunderstandings. <laughs> they each have their own little misconception here. <laughs> so, so, right. absolutely. Our next uh, word, takaru, which is a u verb, takari, takaru. Um, it means to flock, like to gather around. Um, and here it's used to refer to, I believe, um, an insect like lice. It gathers like in your hair type of ideas, all in that area. Takaru. Takaru. It's all in the hair. It's it. <laughs> it it just it means to like the flock to go to, to be in like one area. They'll be like, ooh, you smell great. Like bees flock to flowers, right? So lice flock to hair, right? Flock to something is takaru. Yes, takaru. To flock, to flock to something. Hi. And nomi is the word for flee. So nomi, nomi. is takaru to like dogs. Flee. To flock to. Flee that flock to. What is the te form of takaru? Takate. Perfect. Takate. To flock, to flock to something. Our next word is shirami, very similar to the nomi, but this one means lice. I'm not going to quiz you if you know which one's which, but we got the word flea and lice. Shirami? So that one is nomi, this one is shirami. Right. Um, and do you know what this soul means? Like fukigen soul? Soul. Soul. To appear like. Hi, to, to appear like. Like. Perfect. And idu to exist, to exist either idu. What is the stem form of that? It's iri. No, you're thinking about idu, which is to need. Idu. And then the other idu. Hi. We wanted idu to exist. Neko ga idu. To exist in the stem form. So if we. If we turn this into the mas form, is e mas. Hi. If we drop the mas, then it's just e. You're right. It's just e. E. So e d would be I need, and e on its own is to exist. Um. So right here we have e so. That's so interesting, Mani. Isn't that the case that if e on its own, it's to exist, then the adjective. Like the, for example, like the color blue is uh, aoi, a, a, ao is blue as a noun, right? As a noun by itself is ao. Right. If you add that little e at the end, it's become an adjective. adjective. So and if with I e want... do, if you drop the do, it turns into a noun. Very weird. It turned into an e. So I'm guessing this e is in fact the stem form of the e do. Because you can end a sentence with uh, for example, I can say, uh, like I, I am, no, no, like my clothes is, it's like, ore no, ore no fuku wa aoi. Right. Period. So this e as as iru, it's being blue. But I'm guessing they dropped the root, the the ru. I, I, I'm just guessing here. I'm, I'm... It's a really good guess, but it's probably not true just because of like a lot of things about it that like tilt your head a bit when you think about it too deeply. Like the fact that Aoi is um not a, doesn't have feelings. So because theoretically I... you should take Aru, right? And also the issue with other conjugations such as the E disappearing and turning into Ku. Um, Hmm. I find it just strange that in Japanese you could just end a sentence with an adjective. Like you can't do that in Not English. Not really. Um, because it's... in Japanese, I would argue that there might not be any adjectives, and there might actually be three types of verbs, which are ru verbs, u verbs, and e verbs. Because and uh, there's actually no such thing as an e adjective. And that instead, no is the actual adjective form because ao can become ao no exorcist, which means the blue exorcist, right? Versus like with English, we can take ed to turn that into a adjective like verb saying like the redded book, 
mm. a really bad example. But we, we can take um, verbs and turn them into adjectives in English just by doing ed. So it's probably more likely that these are actually verbs and it's just the three type of verbs in Japanese. But these verbs that end with e are more adjective like. Um, so e. This is a good way of thinking about it, Monty. Nobody ever say it to me quite like this. This is actually really good. It just it, it follows more that way, but like uh, you have to do like a lot more like linguistic research to know for it, sure. But in general, you just kind of say, say the the other thing is like harder to teach someone. Be like, oh yeah, blue is blue, blue with aoi is a verb, and you're like, what? But yeah, just it, grammatically, it follows that structure it's doing, very well. It's doing blue. It's like it's doing the blue. It's, it's doing the it's blue. Being, it's doing it. It, it, it is, yeah. Yeah. It's doing the blue. And you, you'll see that a lot in Japanese. It's doing the whatever. So that, that is more likely, I would say, than the opposite. Mani, that is perfectly the reason why things tend to end with iru, like te iru, hi, to hi, describe hi. the state of something. Like something is in the particular state. But iru is clearly a verb, and it's clearly mean that it's it's being that, but it's doing that. It's not just being, but it's actually oh, doing. Cool. It. Like I, I think for me in Japanese, the 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 notion of being is actually a a verb, just like in English, like right. ing. It's you that is. Yeah, is the is actually verb is. you doing the the state that you are in. Right. You you're not just passively in that state. Hi. Okay, okay. Back to the sentence. <laughs> um. Nomi ya shirami mo. Uh, takate isoda. So it it seems like. Uh, it looks like it was flocked by fleas and fleas and, and lice. Hi, that's exactly what it says. And contextually, they're talking about his messy sky, right? Um, I'm kind of troubled with my servant and that kind of thing. And he also looks like he has fleas and lice, right? He's making that assumption, right? Because he's dirty and he picked him up off the street. He that's what you that. think if he picked up a cat off the street, he'd be like, oh. Probably has fleas. Um, Mommy, you know what I mean? Yeah. Your theory is perfect. Every time I see the E now, it's triggered something in my mind. <laughs> it's a whole philosophical thing going on here. It's like that E is hidden in itself. It's an, it's an e, I, I swear, I feel like it's an E. It's not an E as you say, but it, it has the meaning of a verb like thing. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, in fact, Perfect. And how do you say sleep? Uh, no, no, it's not no me. It's nu, 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 mu, nu, mu. Yes, it's ne, mu, ne, mu, ri. Ne, mu, ne, mu, ri. Right. Do you know what say like coins in Japanese? Like copper coins? <laughs> oh, Okay, okay. I'll go back to that later. Um, it's um, do do ka do ka do ka. So, what what triggered you? The is the is the e sound for that memory. Yeah, there's an e sound to it. There's an e but, sound to all stem form except for new verbs. <laughs> Same with and, meshi sky. That is not e the. That's the stem form e from skau sky. I. Hi, 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 hi. Uh, do you know what a kushi is? It's the first time we've seen this in this book. Um, kushi, kushi is uh, what is it? A comb? It is a comb. Correct. Kushi is a comb. This ugly ass kanji means comb. Combs are normally made out of wood, especially in the olden days. And you think of those fancy Japanese cones, combs. So, kushi right there. Yeah. Rest of it, it's a little bit more like, I guess that kind of looks like the thing sticking out of comb, and so does that. Um, maybe this is the hair they're brushing. Yeah, kushi, comb. Kushi, uh, hi. Can you read this line for me? 
あシラシミラとシミラトリの串を買いに It's not買いに It is 買いに It is 買いに From 買い買う to buy That's our E for stem form So I went to buy I went to buy the comb to to do what? To shimiratori. To take the, the lice away. Yes. To, this is from Toru, right, Mani? Yep, it's Toru. Toru to take. To take lice away. This is a comb. So it's a comb for taking out lice. Um, they still have those. Um, those. Those brushes that you're supposed to use when your kid has lice to rip them out. That's what it's saying. See, Moni,、oh, you, you're totally right here. So every time you have this E sound, right, the E sound that is hidden inside of the R, it's tori. This, this tori is, it, it acts like a verb, even though I know it's not a verb. It came from a verb. It's conjugated into the stem form. But when we translate it, we still say tech lice.、Mm, yeah, English, yeah. The- It still had that Take verb, away lice comb. It still had that verb like meaning to it, even though in the Japanese we know that it's now functioning as a noun. With the no for adjectiveness. Hi. I don't know.、Um, really? Can I read this word right here? Doka. Perfect.、Oh. Um, this is a word that you probably know, but first I'm seeing it's in here. Do you happen to know what it is? Atarashi. Atarashi. Perfect.、Um, let's go read this line. Atarashi. Atarashi. Mani, if it's just atarashi by itself, not the, if you take out the e at the end and it's just、right. atarashi, then that's a noun, right? Yes. You add the E and suddenly it becomes an adjective. Hi. Hi. That, that's、okay. why it fits the hypothesis of being、um, the types、It's、of verb makers. Verb like thing. Because <laughs> that's what you do with verbs, right? You take away the do, a- it's a verb suddenly. I mean, it's a noun. So you take away the E, it's a noun. A <laughs>、uh, you won't really see a tadash by itself except for in conjugation normally. But、Hi. you take away the E, and it's now a noun. Same with like E adjectives, kireina. Um, na. So I'd say kirena and then、um, neko no. I would say na and no are the only adge- actual adjective. Because these two conjugate the same normally. Hi. Kind of like adjectives. And that, these both need the da, the de afterwards to mark a ver-、uh, verb, right? Hi. It definitely makes logical sense. I, I really think that, Mani, I really think that that de is actually a shortened form of the actual, this de is actually de aru because in、Probably. old form, it's in the formal, it's de aru. So I think over time that aru just dropped out and you end up with the de or the da at the end. So every da well, is. Same actually, with like des, right? Des. So in old Japanese, I think everything e n d with verbs. Every single thing, every sentence e n d with verbs. Over time, people got e n lazy and then it b e c o m e da and des. Right. Well, that would still make da and des、um, verbs. It just would、yeah. be a shortened verb. Like you can't、It's- put these in non verb locations, right? De is te form and it, can't, it works exactly like te form, just like a t a r a s h i k t e It's te form, works exactly like te form, just like tabete. It just、Hi. works the same. So, in essence, as... da is probably a verb too. Yeah.、Uh, specifically, it's a copula, same as dearu, which is a type of verb. Specifically, it's the kind of verb that is is in English, except for is is also something else, which is called a helping verb. So, there's helping verbs. And there's copulas, and is is both in English, and da is only a copula, while idu and adu are examples of helping verbs. Now、oh, you're talking about the, the grammatical rules. 
So it basically means it's a verb that exists only to convey tense is what a copula is versus um, a helping verb is a verb that attaches to another verb to convey tense. So Hi. copula means there's no verb except for it, which, in, which insinuates the existence, non-existence of something like she is pretty, right? Is is the verb of the sentence, meaning she is currently existing in a state of prettiness versus she was pretty means she existed as prettiness in the past. So that's what a copula is. It is a verb that conveys no meaning other than the existence of a complement of the subject versus a helping verb like she is looking is, is there just to help with tensing and not for the other things. Well, the ing is the actual doing the work there. Hi. Hi. Thank you. That really makes sense here. So here it's say, Atarashi buku wo kai ni iko. Let us go buy new clothes. Let's go buy new clothes. Perfect. Let's go buy new clothes. I'm going to buy new clothes. Um, Ataeru means um to receive. Ataeru to receive. What is the causative form of iku? Iku. Ikaseru. Hi, ikaseru. Perfect. And sorry, I said the meaning of atairu wrong. Atairu is to give. Like, agiru. To give. <laughs> sorry. Ata Wait, why do they have two different verbs for the same meaning? Um, So you don't normally use ageru and um atairu for the same thing. Um, Specifically, atairu is to give to someone lower than you like god will atairu to human beings kind of idea versus um ageru is to give like i would say neutral it doesn't insinuate aboveness just like yaru means to give but you're also giving from to something below you um the difference is that yaru i would say is more rude it's like what you do with your dog but atairu is more like i best i the the, the knight was bestowed upon from the queen kind of feeling Versus I gave my dog food. I totally just had another like mind blowing experience just now, Moni. It's crazy. It oh. it's so incredible to realize these things. It's almost as if in the Japanese language, built into its construction itself is the notion of a hierarchy. Yes. Like wherever you are, the moment you open your mouth and you speak something, the moment you have even a thought, you already in some sort of a hierarchy. Yeah. And the polite thing in Japanese is describe your relationship with someone with your words, which is really it, different than in English, where the polite thing is to use language that is called polite language, which is different in Japanese. Which is just like, for example, if I want to ask my mom for something, you would normally want to say, Mama, give me, beep, beep. Like, 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 I don't know. <laughs> like, you wouldn't, like, you would say, Mother, could I please, I, please, I beg of you. Like, you'd be dramatic and, like, use the polite language. Um, I feel like that's more common in English, but in Japanese, that'd be weird. <laughs> if you're asking your mom to do something, you should be using the, we are close with the please, right? Right. So it's the interesting thing for how that politeness level works. You're right. It's it's for describing the relationship you have with people and also what? some amount of hierarchy. Either like, it I am below you, you are above below me. We are close friends at the same level. We are acquaintances, but I, I recognize you. You are my acquaintance. So you say the wrong one. It kind of feels like, do you not know me? Do you not know uh, who I am? Do, do yeah. you think we're close? I'm pretty sure we're acquaintances. Did you did you mistake me for someone else? You kind of think about it that way as rudeness. It's like almost like calling someone the wrong name. Yes. Yeah, it's built in. It's crazy. It's like it's built in. You cannot escape it. You cannot go outside of these notions of hierarchy. Like even if you are the emperor, even if you are the emperor and you're talking to God, you still have to speak in humble form. Because so, so. <laughs> the gods are above you. <laughs> yes. It's incredible. Thayeru. To bestow yes. like you are a god. What is the causative form of Thayeru? This is a new verb. Um causative. So it's and it's a ru verb. So it's Ata e, uh, causative, ruver. 
与えさるの。Yep. させる。させる。与えさせる。Perfect. So let's go read this example sentence. させる。はい。Uh, ま、じつまじつしは、uh, めしすかい。めしすかい。I hate this word because of the <laughs> s s come right next to each other. めしすかいにどうかをあたえて、かれをあたらしいくしをかいにいかせた。So, いかせた is that causative form. So, Let me go. Good guess. Who was the subject here? The magician. So, uh, the magician's, the servant, um, give money. So, I will give money to the servant. Right. I'll give money to the servant. Um, so the magician gave money to the servant. He, um, the magician gave money to the servant, let him to let him go buy, let him go buy new clothes. No, a new comb, a new Bushi. comb. Yeah. Let him go. Um, I specifically put the O here because um, with causative form, if there's D, you can't do the forceful version, but O can insinuate either. So it could be um, the magician gave the servant money so he could allow the server to buy clothes. That is definitely a translation as possible. Um, in general, I probably would have just dropped this then because we already got the knee there. But I put the O here because I was like, I'm not sure if I need to do this because... Um, you're not really supposed to use ni with mechitsukai if the ni is allow if, if it's ordering. So you have to use o if you're ordering someone. Um, but it, it could be ordering or not ordering, right? It could it could allow for either, but with ni it could only be allowing. Uh so, so here I specifically was saying he was he made the servant go buy a new comb. Is uh my per was how I did translate this because otherwise it feels like excessive by the cottage. <laughs> um, but you probably wouldn't make that sentence anyway in Japanese. Um, hmm. and they didn't, they they fully dropped um the sub the the object and the subject of the sentence. But of course, in that case, the. Subject, the doer would be the writer in the book, which is Nevery, and he's talking about his Meshi Sky. Meshi Sky, my servant, Meshi Sky. Meshi Sky, Meshi Sky. Hi. So it's Doka O. Shikoshi. Shikoshi Ataete. Mommy, this Shikoshi here is a noun, is it? It's an adverb. It's an adverb. It's an official no. adverb rather than mm. being something that's conjugated into an adverb. So there's conjugation like quick into quickly. And then there's things that are just always adverbs like at once. He jumped at once. I see here. So it's shikoshi ataete. I give him a little bit of money. Right. Atarashi fuku to shirami Tori no kushio comb to take out lice kai ni ikase yo. So he say yo. He say yo, meaning he, he, uh, so it's, it's in the causative form, but then he adds the yo to it. Hi. Which means, Why does he add a yo to it at the end? So, well, did he already do this action? He's writing in his diary. So this yo mean that let volition. So let's is a okay way to translate it, and that is how you are told to translate it in like Genki. I would argue it's not a very good way of translating it. Um, it actually means I'm going to, as I told you before. It's like when a girl says I'm going to the bathroom. 
does anybody want to come with me when you're with a bunch of girlfriends the insinuation there is an invitation if you say it out loud to a group of people but literally it's just i'm going to blank it means i have a plan it's set down it's a it's a kind of a spur of a moment kind of plan um tomori focus more on like a tent like oh yes i intended for that to happen well yo is more just like i'm going to do this right saying i plan to go to the bathroom is kind of dramatic right versus i'm going to the bathroom that's i haven't gone yet you're going to leave soon so that's why he's using yo here he says i'm going to ikaseru my messy sakai probably in the morning i see so it's it's basically less aggressive than tsumori which is very much okay i made my itinerary at 1 a.m servant goes to the store like that's what tsumori would insinuate it would, it would insinuate a very this like you made an itinerary for it well yo was more just like eh, I'll, I'll do this tomorrow hi hi so here he say um i will i will let him i'll give him some i'm sorry um i'll give him some money i'll give him some money to go buy new clothes and comb to take out lice right. tomorrow or oh, not tomorrow i will i will let him oh, yeah. We'll give him contextually some it's tomorrow because it's nighttime. Hi. <laughs> but it, it literally says, okay, I'm gonna go make him go buy a new comb uh and clothes and uh after I give him some money. Hi. Perfect. And this is actually where we're going to stop for the day. So I'll stop our recording. Any